My name's Jocelyn Crefield. I've been uh, breeding and showing Portuguese water dogs since 2001, so that's 11 years this year. Uh, they're a lovely fun breed. Um, I've been actively showing dogs since the late 70s, so I've had quite a bit of experience. I started off with, with uh, stand-up poodles, which are a lovely, big, fun, bouncy breed. Um, I then went down to Laotian, little lion dogs. And my husband so missed having a big dog that we decided we'd have the Portuguese water dogs. And they, to me, it feels like a cross between my standard poodles and my louchens, because they're like, like big louchens, because they're shown clipped off. Um, and they've got this lovely, happy, outgoing personalities. They are large, medium breed. They weigh around 20 to 25 kilos. They come in two coat varieties. There's the curly coat, which is this lovely one here, and the wavy coat, which is uh, Lily sitting here. Um, in pet trim, the curly coat looks particularly nice, and a lot of people think maybe she might be a poodle because it's quite a tight coat. But the wavies tend to be a lot looser and more open appearance but both are non-shedding, so people do find that that's quite convenient for people with allergies, um, and certainly it's quite beneficial in the home that you don't get lots of hair stuck to your clothing all the time. They come in essentially two colours, black or brown, although the breed standard in its country of origin does list white and blue, and they can have white markings on them, sometimes around the head, on the feet, a little around the neck, maybe on the tail and also the face, but that must not be more than 30% for show purposes. In America, they actually have what we would class as party colors, which are predominantly white with colored patches, but that's not a color that's recognized in its country of origin or indeed in the UK. They can be used for agility. They have great fun with that. They're very easy to train, if a little willful. Obedience they will do. Um, again, you need a good percentage of obedience to do the agility. If they don't understand and recognize the um, commands, then you're going to have a very wild time on the agility course. The Portuguese water dog has been used and recognized in P Portugal, used by the fishermen on the small boats are going out fishing, they were part of the crew and they would dive off the boat if anything was lost over the side. They would take heaving lines across from boat to boat where they, were, um, where they used the, the big fishing nets to scoop the fish in. And um, they would take mes messages ashore. They were part of the crew, essentially, and when the crew men went off and left the boat on the beach, they would guard it. So they can stand and look as if they're protecting, but they're actually a very, very affectionate breed. Because they're a water dog, they do tend to absolutely love water. Um, their feet are webbed um, between the toes, is webbing which will come quite a long way down between the toes. And they are very powerful at the front, and they just love water. Uh, when we first came to this property, we had open water butts from our outbuildings, and I would find them walking round and round in circles in the open water butts. We also have a, a nice fish pond, which we've had to fence to keep them out of it. So it is a sort of natural tendency. If you're walking by rivers or, or streams and ponds, don't be surprised if your dog decides to leap off the side and go for a good swim. It's great until you try to take them home in the car and you've got a soggy wet dog. The breed have a lovely temperament. Um, they are a good personality. They're the sort of dog that like people. They like to be with you all the time. They're very friendly. They'll let you know if there's someone around, but I wouldn't imagine that they would ever bite a burglar. They're more likely to lick him to death. They're, they're quite big and bouncy. Um, they're very much in your face type of dog. When you call them, they like to come racing up and it's paws on the shoulder and uh, they just love to be with you all the time. They want to please, they like to carry things, and they talk to you and the whole body wags at the same time. So you get this sort of weaving, muttering, lovable teddy bear.
they're quite good with children. They seem to respect if it's a small child. They don't tend to knock them over. They will go up to them and they can perhaps knock a child over, but they would never ever do anything in any way to hurt them, more likely to protect them. I think all dogs can be very noisy, but the Portuguese water dog has a good deep voice. But if, like children, you teach them what's right and wrong and you don't allow incessant barking, you want them to bark if someone comes to the door, but you don't want them to stand and bark all day, so it's just down to training. I think training is one of the most important things with any breed, so when you have a puppy, you must start from day one. They're very friendly to all breeds of dogs and cats, really. If there's a cat in the home before the dog comes, then the dog will just get used to it. If the cats choose to run away, I think most dogs attempted to chase them but they don't have any vice and uh, they, there's no reason why they don't get on with any kind of pets, horses, dogs. One of the puppies that I sold some years ago lived with a girl who had um, pet, a pot-bellied pig and they were the best of friends and used to trot round the uh, orchard together. I think they will live quite happily as a single dog. I think most dogs do like company, but not everybody has the facility to keep two or more large dogs. So a single dog, again, down to training, it's a one-to-one. -one. They just love people. They'll be a very happy member of the family um, and live quite happily on their own. Because they're a big, boisterous breed, they do actually need quite a lot of exercise. They really need a good run, several miles, twice a day, really. Otherwise, they can get a little bored, and then that's when they get up to mischief. So exercise is important. Taking care not to exercise after eating, as that can cause physical problems for them in terms of bloat and other problems with their feeding. Swimming is a very good exercise for them. People who have pools, I, I have a couple that's gone to people who have swimming pools. They'll go out into the sea. People who live on the beach or nearer uh, the coast will take them swimming, but otherwise nice good walks across the country or around the park, chasing balls. They love the toys and they will very happily bring things back for you. So, you know, they do need quite a lot of good running, um, free running really to um, get all the bounce out of them. They are a very intelligent breed. Um, they like to please, but they do have a slightly willful nature. And if it's something that they're really, really interested in, it can be difficult to encourage them to come back to you. They do have this slightly willful streak and it just needs plenty of training. It's possible to use treats for training, very small treats, perhaps pieces of liver or small pieces of the dog food. Some people like to use the clicker training and that can be very effective, although I don't tend to use that because my dogs are essentially show dogs, so I just want them to behave themselves, to stand nicely for me in the ring and to trot around happily, so I do tend to use just little small dog treats for my training. The grooming um, of the pet dog is um, relatively straightforward. Most people will actually take them to a grooming parlour where the, the coat is cut short with um, clippers um, and varying lengths can be left. This particular dog has her body coat taken fairly short and the legs are scissored to give a more teddy bear appearance. The ears are trimmed tidily and the faces are clipped. Um, but on different blades. By using different blades, you get different lengths of coat in the varying places. And the tail is always left as a nice flag because that's the waggy end, which is the pleasing end. You always know when a dog's happy when that tail's going. Um, the show dogs are groomed um, just clipped on the faces and the hindquarters are clipped off completely, all the feet, the toes, everything, more or less to the last rib and then the body coat is left on because in its original country they were used in the water. It is the Atlantic, so it can be quite cold even in the summer. So the coat is left on the body here around the chest to keep the chest and the lungs warm um, and the, the front legs, that hair, 
with the driving action through the water. They really power through the water like this um, is left on and it, it protects all the joints for them. And the face is clipped so that when they dive off the boat, they're going in and the hair isn't getting in their eyes. So it's, it's an aid to swimming. Grooming of both coat varieties should be done on a regular basis. The um, curly coat, if it's not kept groomed on a regular basis, can actually knot up quite badly around the hindquarters if you have them in a pet trim. So it is quite important. The soft slicker brush is the best one to use for the pet trim, uh, plus the double-ended comb, and then you can make sure when you've given them a good brush that you take the comb through, then you know that there's no knots. Attention should always be given behind the ears, um, under the tail and obviously on the tail because that's the longer hair that's left there. Inside the ears also need plucking. The hair will grow inside the ears and this can be plucked between finger and thumb. Most groom parlours will do that for you but you can always check and ask them and make sure that they pluck the ears for you so that dirt and debris doesn't get trapped. It is quite important between visits to the grooming parlour to actually go through the coat maybe twice a week would be sufficient to keep them nice and tidy. With the um, wavy coat they're much easier and they can probably in a pet trim go with a groom once a week. Uh, obviously if they've been wet and they've been out swimming and you dry them, when you rub a dog with a towel you rub the hair together and that can mat it up so it is quite important if they've had lots of swimming and lots of rubbing of towels to um, perhaps give them a more regular groom. For the show coat, I groom my wavy dogs about twice a week and that usually is sufficient. They can knot up quite a bit between the puppy stage and the adult stage where the coat changes from the more fluffy puppy coat to an adult coat and uh, sometimes they need to be groomed uh, almost every day just for a short period and then when that, you get that over with you can go back to the uh, twice a week. The breed um, do have or can get PRA, which is progressive, progressive retina atrophy, which is a disease of the eye where the retina becomes detached. There are health tests for this being formulated mainly in America. In this country, it is recommended by the Kennel Club that breeders do the test for PRA. By using the health tests, we can ensure that people buying puppies have nice healthy puppies with no problems. There is also um, a test now which has been formed in Pennsylvania um, for heart, a heart problem, um, which is a juvenile uh, heart problem where puppies will die. Sudden death can be caused between five weeks and seven months old. Um, they've been trying to test and get DNA markers for that particular problem in America and they're just at the point of actually releasing a new marker test which means that in this country we'll be able to send blood to America and have all our dogs tested. The other health test that we all like to do is hip scoring that is done by x-ray. Uh, it's done through the Kennel Club. The uh, British Veterinary Association look at the x-ray plates and they score the dog um, which can be anything from naught to 152. Most Portuguese water dogs come out at around single figures for each hip, up to maybe 15. The lower the score basically, the better the hips are going to be. Serious cases can get a hip dysplasia, which is very detrimental to the animal. Um, this is a test that generally most breeders use for all the larger breeds, and I do personally think it is very important. I would advise anybody who is looking to consider having a Portuguese water dog, where possible, um, to contact breeders or maybe go to a dog show and see the dogs in the flesh, handle them, um, enjoy their company and see if its personality is going to suit your family. Um, I would say that perhaps they might not be quite so happy living in, in a flat. They do need to be able to get out quite freely. They are a lovely breed, so it does tend to suit most families if the size is suitable for you.
the boys tend to be very much more loving, I would say, than the bitches, but it's down to personalities and the way that you bring them up. The boys are obviously stronger and heavier than the bitches. They are all a very affectionate, loving breed. We do get a lot of inquiries from people who do have allergies, and they are considered to be one of the top 10 breeds for non-allergic. But I would advise anybody who does have seriously allergic family member to make sure that they do visit and consider the both coat types and, um, if you like, expose the person to the dogs to ensure that that really won't cause them a problem. Other than that, they should suit most family members. I think it's a breed that I will probably always have. Perhaps as we get older, we might just go down to one, one that can come and sit on the sofa next to us and have lots of cuddles. The Portuguese Water Dog Club of Great Britain have a website. There will be a lot of information on there. There's a list of breeders that's available and lots of information. It lists our shows and uh, information on all our health testing and uh, any information you want. The Kennel Club website is also very good and gives lots of information. It also shows the health testing. So if you're considering a puppy, you can go onto the Kennel Club health site and you can see if somebody tells you the breeding of the, the animals and see whether they've actually had the health checks. That is something I think that is quite important. Mm -hmm.